Every time that my mind slip, I just see my past life. Heaven dreams in a dream, I wonder why I carried on with the things that made you lose your mind. There's a way I can undo what I've done. Can we be strangers against our fresh like a morning? What's so bad about that? So why won't you follow? Why won't you follow me home? I know I can't make you mine. Yes, I ran out of time. There's no hope for me. I fell down the bottom. And so I fell down way deep. But if I can't have the real you, then let me make a 3D print of you. So hey everybody, it's Mickey. And in today's video, we are having a spring family brunch and I'm sharing all the recipes with you. I have make ahead recipes, crock pot recipes, and so much more. So if you are new here, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. The more you can do ahead of time on your party day, the better. It's always good to have a couple recipes that you can make ahead of time and stick in the fridge ready for the oven in the morning. One of the casseroles that I'm going to have tomorrow is what I like to call our Christmas casserole. It's something that I have been making forever. The kids always look forward to it and it is just really, really good. It's one of those casseroles that you can easily change up depending on what you have in the refrigerator. So today I'm going to be making this casserole with some sweet Italian sausage. I have some chopped green pepper here. I'll be chopping up my little red pepper as well. I'm going to use probably maybe like a third of this onion, a couple mushrooms. You're also going to need about six or seven slices of some good white bread some cheese of your choice. We like to use the sharp cheddar. You'll also need some milk and some eggs. So I'm just going to top up a couple of these veggies and we are going to start to brown our sausage. When it's about, I would say, you know, almost three quarters of the way done, I'm going to throw in the veggies and cook those until they are pretty soft and translucent. Even though we are going to keep this casserole in the refrigerator overnight, we don't want the veggies to be, you know, too mushy. We want them to be able to hold up to all the good things that we are going to be adding into it. So I have my Italian sausage here cooking away. It's about three quarters of the way done and I'm going to add my veggies. and saute these all together until the veggies soften up a little bit and the sausage is cooked all the way through. So I have sprayed my 9 by 13 casserole dish with some Pam. You could also butter it if that's easier for you. And I've torn up six slices of some good white bread. And then on top of this, I'm just going to layer our sausage and veggie mixture. On top of this, you're going to add your cheese. I'm going to say you just keep adding it until your heart tells you to stop. We love cheese in our family, so I like to put a nice layer here on top. And once we have that covered, we are going to do our cheese and milk mixture. So I have six eggs in my bowl here, and to this I am going to add just a little bit of Dijon mustard, like maybe that amount. I'm also going to add a couple shakes of hot sauce. It really doesn't add heat, it adds a lot of flavor though. I'm also going to put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in there. 
I have some pepper and some salt. And I'm going to add a cup and a half of milk. Just going to slightly beat that mixture up and then you're just going to pour it right on top of your casserole. We are going to cover this up with some aluminum foil, stick it in the fridge, and you're going to want to let it sit overnight or for at least eight hours until all of that yummy egg mixture is soaked up. The day of your event, take your casserole out of the refrigerator for about a half hour to 40 minutes before you want to bake it so it can come up to room temperature. And then you're going to bake in a 375 degree oven for about 40 minutes to an hour until the middle is set. I don't think I even mentioned when I put the breakfast casserole into the oven, I switched up the temperature a little bit and I think I really like the way that it turned out here. I upped the temperature to about 400 degrees and I baked it for a good 40 minutes. The last few minutes I had to um, spiked it at 425 and it finished this casserole off as well. It smells so good and it looks so delicious. I have our breakfast casserole all plated up. It is just so delicious. It smells so good. I have it here with a little bowl of strawberries and blueberries and a slice of vanilla brioche bread. This casserole is just one of our family all-time favorites. It greets us every Christmas morning and it's what I always bring along for, you know, if I get invited out to a brunch or something like that. Everybody always loves it and it is just so delicious. It's the morning of our brunch and I have two crock pot recipes that I'm going to be making today. Crock pot meals are a great addition to any gathering because you can get them started early in the morning and kind of forget about them until you are ready to serve. This next recipe is one of my all time favorites. It's for cheesy potatoes. It's great recipe to have as a side dish at dinner time and I like to always have it on my buffet table if I'm having some people over for dinner because it's so simple to make Make. everybody loves it and you make it in the crock pot so what you're going to need for this recipe is a bag 30 ounce bag of shredded hash brown potatoes you're going to need a cup of milk about two to three cups of whatever cheddar type cheese that you like the best you will need a can of cream of chicken soup you'll need about eight ounces of sour cream now you can use um, half of a chopped onion i like to use um, a little bit of dried minced onion in this recipe i also like to add a little bit of garlic powder some black pepper and just a little bit of hot pepper flakes so you're going to get a very large bowl and you are going to take your cream of chicken soup eight ounces of sour cream. I would use just the whole sour cream instead of the light sour cream. I just think that it gives a little bit better result. And you can eyeball it. That looks good to me. And then you're gonna take your cup of milk and whisk this all together. To this, you're going to add your seasonings. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this dried minced onion a little bit of garlic powder some red pepper flakes and a little bit of black pepper make sure that is all mixed around really well and we are going to mix in our whole bag of hash browns and about a cup or so of the cheddar cheese. We're going to 
save the other half of the cheese to sprinkle on top once it goes into the crock pot. And you want to mix this all together as well as you can. I have my crock pot all lined and we are going to take our hash brown mixture and spoon it into the bottom of your crock pot. Then just spread it out as best as you can because you know your hash browns are still a little bit frozen. And then you're going to take the remainder of your cheese and sprinkle it on top. I am very generous with the cheese because our family will eat pretty much anything covered in cheese. There you go. Then you're going to cover and cook on high for two to three hours or low four to five hours. The cheesy potatoes are all done. They're sizzling away in there and they smell so, so good. I really think the addition of the minced onion and garlic powder and a little bit of pepper really do a lot for the flavor of this dish. This is such a good side dish if you have like, you know, ham on Easter Sunday or something like that. They are so versatile. They can go with almost every meal. If you are like me and you love cheese and potatoes, this is like the perfect recipe for you. Super simple to make, it comes out perfectly every time and it goes with just about everything. I like to serve it very simply with just a little bit of either fresh or dried parsley on the top and it is just perfect as it is. I always love to have a little something sweet at the end of our meal, and this next recipe is for crock pot apple cobbler. This dessert has only a few ingredients. It's so simple to put together, and it just makes your house smell delicious. This recipe is a little bit sticky, so I am going to be using one of my Reynolds Wrap crock pot liners. I get asked all the time which ones that I use and the only ones I have ever seen are the ones from Reynolds and they are the slow cooker liners. You can find them at Walmart or online at Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link to them down below because I I guess not everybody has them in their area, but they're really a lifesaver, especially like for today when we're having, you know, a bunch of people over. I just don't want to have to be, you know, scrubbing dishes and, you know, missing out on the fun. So the other things that we are going to need for this recipe is two cans of apple pie filling. Now this can be any pie filling that you want. I have made this with blueberries, peaches, and strawberries, which is really, really good. You're going to need a little bit of cinnamon sugar and cinnamon, six tablespoons of melted butter. You can pretty much use almost any cake mix that you want. Today, I'm going to be using the Classic White by Duncan Hines. It's one of my favorites. But I have also made this recipe with yellow cake mix and spice cake, which is really good, especially in the fall. And I think you can also probably get away with using some lemon cake as well. I have my crock pot liner in and I'm gonna take my cans of the apple pie filling and I'm just going to empty these into the bottom of my crock pot. You're just gonna spread out the filling in the bottom there. I kind of like to chop up the larger pieces of apple. I think that in the end, it just gives you like a nice little bite-sized piece. And then you're gonna take some of your cinnamon sugar and just sprinkle it right on top. Then you're going to take your cake mix, whichever one that you choose, and then sprinkle that as evenly as possible over your filling. Smooth that off as well. And then you can take some cinnamon 
and sprinkle that on top. Next, take your melted butter and with a spoon, drizzle it on top of your cake mix and cinnamon. Then you're just going to cover and cook it on high for four hours or low for six hours. Our apple cobbler and it has been cooking away. It is all done and it just does make your house smell so good. I have to be honest, I've already been in here to sneak a little spoonful. This really does make the best dessert. You can go ahead and just add um, some vanilla ice cream. I like to buy it in those little party cups, I call them. They're really easy just to put out a big bowl of these you know when it's dessert time instead of having you know like the messy gallons of ice cream all around this is also really really good on top of a waffle with some ice cream so there is so many ways that you can serve this and the ability to just switch out the different fruits and the cake mix make it so versatile for pretty much any season or any gathering It seems that you really can't have a brunch these days without some type of French toast casserole. And this is one of my most favorite ones that I have tried. It's really easy to make and everybody seems to love it. So what you're going to need for this recipe is about nine slices of really good thick bread. This is brioche bread. You can also use um, French bread or anything that is a really good hearty thick bread. You're going to need six eggs, two cups of milk, you'll need a cup of brown sugar, some vanilla, cinnamon, some cinnamon sugar, and a half a cup of butter. So we have melted that half a stick of butter, or half a cup of butter, I'm sorry, and then we're going to put in our brown sugar and mix that all up until the sugar is dissolved. First thing you want to do is to butter a nine by 13 pan. I would really recommend buttering it. I have never tried it with just, you know, nonstick spray, but I think the butter adds a little bit of something to the recipe. So now that you have your sugar and butter mixture, we are going to spread it around the bottom of our prepared nine by 13 casserole dish. Spread it out as best as you can. And then you're going to top it with your torn bread pieces. So in this medium sized bowl, I have six eggs and to this we are going to add two teaspoons of vanilla, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and we're going to whisk it all together with our two cups of milk. Now you're going to take your egg mixture and pour it on top of all of your bread, trying to be sure that all the bread is saturated with your egg mixture. And then on top of this, we are going to sprinkle an additional teaspoon of cinnamon. And I also like to add a little bit of cinnamon sugar. It helps give it a little bit of a crust on top. 
Then we're going to bake this in a 425 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. This is that delicious French toast casserole right out of the oven. I did adjust the cooking time a little bit. I think I baked it for about 10 minutes longer and I think that it is just perfect. We're gonna plate this up with a little bit of powdered sugar and some fresh fruit and I will show you that in just a minute. This is how I like to serve our French toast casserole. I have it here with a little bit of powdered sugar and some berries. Today we have strawberries and blueberries. This is really just so delicious. You could almost get away with having this as your dessert for your meal if you added a little vanilla ice cream and maybe a little drizzle of maple syrup. It would be just perfect. So we just had a wonderful time being all together with good friends, family, and some really good food. You'll have to leave me a comment down below and let me know if you try any of these recipes and which one was your favorite. They are all so delicious, easy to make, and they can really feed a crowd. So thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you'll join our communities over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bashful Life. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you all back as part of our YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other. Stay safe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.